yet of Hamlet, our dear brother's death, the memory be green, and that it us be fitted to bear our hearts in grief and our whole kingdom to be contracted in one brow of woe. Yet so far hath discretion fought with nature that we with wisest sorrow think on him together with remembrance of ourselves. Therefore, our sometimes sister, now our queen, the imperial jointress to this warlike state, have we as twere with a defeated joy taken to wife. Nor have we here barred your better wisdoms which have freely gone with this affair along for all our thanks. Now follows that you know, young Fortinbras holding a weak supposal of our worth or thinking by our late dear brother's death, our state to be disjoint and out of frame. <laughs> Colleaguid with the dream of his advantage, he hath not failed to pester us with message importing the surrender of those lands lost by his father with all bonds of law to our most valiant brother. So much for him. <laughs> and Laertes, what's the news with you? You told us of some suit. What is Laertes? You cannot speak of reason to the Dane and lose your voice. What wouldst thou beg, Laertes, that shall not be my offer, not thy asking? Dread my lord, your leave and favour to return to France. From whence, though willingly I came to Denmark to show my duty in your coronation, yet now I must confess that duty done, my thoughts and wishes bend again toward France and bow them to your gracious leave and pardon. Have you your father's leave? What says Polonius? He hath, my lord. Wrung from me my slow leave by laboursome petition. Take thy fair hour, Laertes, time be thine, and thy best graces spend it at thy will. But now, my cousin Hamlet, and my son. Good Hamlet, cast thy knightly color off, and let thine eye look like a friend on Denmark. Do not forever with thy veiled lids seek for thy noble father in the dust. Thou knowest, it's common, all that lives must die passing through nature to eternity. Tis sweet and commendable in your nature, Hamlet, to give these mourning duties to your father. But you must know your father lost a father. That father lost, lost his, and the survivor bound in filial obligation for some term to do obsequious sorrow. But to persever in obstinate condolement, it is a course of impious stubbornness, it is unmanly grief. It shows a will most incorrect to heaven, a heart unfortified, a mind impatient, an understanding simple and unschooled. For what we know must be, and is as common as any of the most vulgar thing to sense, why should we, in our peevish opposition, take it to heart? Why, it is a fault to heaven, a fault against the dead, a fault to nature, to reason most absurd, whose common theme is death of fathers, and who still hath cried from the first course till he that died today. This must be so. We pray you, Throw to earth this unprevailing woe and think of us as of a father. Well, let the world take note. You are the most immediate to our throne and with no less nobility of love than that which dearest father bears his son do I impart toward you. For your intent in going back to school in Wittenberg, it is most retrograde to our desire. And we beseech you bend you to remain here in the cheer and comfort of our eye. Our chiefest courtier, cousin, and our son. Let not thy mother lose her prayers, Hamlet. I prithee, stay with us. Go not to Wittenberg. 
I shall in all my best obey you, madam. Well, it is a loving and a fair reply. Be as ourself in Denmark. <laughs> madam, come. This gentle and unforced accord of Hamlet sits smiling to my heart. In grace whereof, no jock and health that Denmark drinks today, but the great cannon to the cloud shall tell. And the kings rouse, the heaven shall brute again, re-speaking earthly thunder. Come away. This too, too sullied flesh would melt, thaw, and resolve itself into a dew. Or that the everlasting had not fixed his cannon against self slaughter. Oh, God. Oh, God. How weary, stale, flat and unprofitable seem to me all the uses of this world. Fiond, ah, fine. Tis an unweeded garden that grows to seed. Things rank and gross in nature possess it merely. That it should come to this, but two months dead. Nay, not so much, not two. So excellent a king, that was to this Hyperion to a Setia, so loving to my mother that he might not beteem the winds of heaven visit her face too roughly. Heaven and earth must I remember why she would hang on him as if increase of appetite had grown by what it fed on. And yet within a month, let me not think on it, frailty, Thy name is woman. A little month, ere yet those shoes were old with which she followed my poor father's body, like Niobe, all tears. Why, she, even she, oh God, a beast that once discourse of reason would have mourned longer, married with mine uncle, my father's brother. No more like my father than I to Hercules. Within a month, Ere yet the salt of most unrighteous tears had left the flushing in her galled eyes, she married. Almost wicked speed to post with such dexterity to incestuous sheets. It is not, nor it cannot, come to good. But break my heart. Or I must hold my tongue. Hail to your lordship. I'm glad to see you well. Horatio. Or I do forget myself. The same, my lord, and your poor servant ever. Sir, my good friend, I'll change that name with you. <laughs> but what make you from Wittenberg, Horatio? Marcellus! I'm very glad to see you. Good evening, sir. What is your affair in Elsinore? We'll teach you to drink deep ere you depart. My lord, I came to see your father's funeral. I pray thee, do not mock me, fellow student. I think it was to see my mother's wedding. Indeed, my lord, it followed hard upon. Thrift. Thrift, Horatio. The funeral baked meats did coldly furnish forth the marriage tables. Would I had met my dearest foe in heaven, or ever I had seen that day, Horatio. My father. Methinks I... 
see my father. Oh? Where, my lord? In my mind's eye, Horatio. I saw him once. He was a goodly king. He was a man. Take him for all in all, I shall not look upon his like again. My lord, I think I saw him yesternight. So? Who? My lord, the king, your father. King? My father? Season your admiration for a while with an attend here till I may deliver upon the witness of these gentlemen this marvel to you. For oh, God's love, let me hear. Two nights together have these gentlemen, Marcellus and Bernardo, on their watch in the dead waste and middle of the night, been thus encountered. A figure like your father appears before them and with solemn march goes slow and stately by them. Thrice he walked by their oppressed and fear surprised eyes within his truncheon's length, whilst they distilled almost to jelly with the act of fear, stand dumb and speak not to him. This to me, in dreadful secrecy in part they did, and I with them the third night kept the watch, where as they had delivered both in time, form of thing, each word made true and good, the apparition comes. I know your father, these hands are not more like. Where was this? My lord, upon the platform where we watched, did you not speak to it? My lord, I did, but answer made it none. Yet once methought it lifted up its head and did address itself to motion like as it would speak. But even then the morning cock crew loud and at the sound it shrunk in haste away and vanished from our sight. It is very strange. As I do live, my honoured lord, it is true. And we did think it writ down in our duty to let you know of it. Indeed, indeed, sir. But this troubles me. Hold you the watch tonight. We do, my lord. Arm, say you. Arm, my lord. From top to toe. My lord, from head to foot. And saw you not his face? We did, my lord. He wore his beaver up. What? Looked he frowningly? A countenance more in sorrow than in anger. Pale or red? Nay, very pale. And fixed his eyes upon me? Most constantly. I would I had been there. It would have much amazed you. Very like, very like. Stayed it long? While one with moderate haste might tell a hundred. Oh, longer, longer. No, not when I saw it. I will watch. Tonight. Per perchance it will walk again? I warrant you it will. If it assume my noble father's person, I'll speak to it, though hell itself should gape and bid me hold my peace. Uh, I pray you, if you have hitherto concealed this sight, let it be tenable in your silence still. And whatsoever else shall happen tonight, give it an understanding, but no time. So, fare you well. Uh, upon the platform, twixt eleven and twelve, I'll visit you. My father's spirit. In arms. All is not well. I doubt some foul play. Would the night were come. My necessaries are embarked. Farewell. And sister, as the winds give benefit and convoy is assistant, do not sleep but let me hear from you. <laughs> do you doubt that? Damn it. And the trifling of his favors. Who did a fashion? and a toy in blood, a violet in the youth of primy nature, forward not permanent, sweet not lasting, the perfume and suppliance of a minute, no more. No more, good sir? Think it no more. Perhaps he loves you now, 
And now no soil nor cortal doth besmirch the virtue of his will. But you must fear, his greatness weighed, his will is not his own. He may not, as less valued persons do, carve for himself. For on his choice depends the sanctity and health of this whole state. Then weigh what loss your honor may sustain. If with too credent ear you list his songs, or loose your heart, or your chaste treasure open to his unmastered importunity. Oh, fear it, Ophelia. Fear it, my dear sister. And keep you within the rear of your affection, out of the shot of danger and desire. Shall the effect of this good lesson keep as watchman to my heart? <laughs> oh, but good, my brother, do not as some ungracious pastors do. Show me the steep and thorny way to heaven. I was like a puff and reckless libertine, himself the primrose path of dalliance treads, and wrecks not his own reed. <laughs> oh, fear me not. Yet here, Laertes, aboard, aboard, for shame. The wind sits in the shoulder of your sail, and you are stayed for there. My blessing with thee, and these few precepts in thy memory, see thou character. Give thy thoughts no tongue, nor any unproportioned thought his act. Be thou familiar, but by no means vulgar. The friends thou hast, and their adoption tried, grapple unto thy soul with hoops of steel, but do not dull thy palm with entertainment of each new-hatched, unfledged comrade. Beware of entrance to a quarrel, but being in, bear it that the opposed may beware of thee. Give every man thine ear, but few thy voice. Take each man's censure, but reserve thy judgment. Costly thy habit as thy purse can buy, but not expressed in fancy. Rich, not gaudy, for the apparel oft proclaims the man. And they in France, of the best rank and station, are of a most select and generous chief in that. Neither a borrower nor a lender be, for loan oft loses both itself and friend, and borrowing dulls the edge of husbandry. This above all, to thine own self be true, and it must follow as the night the day. Thou canst not then be false to any man. Farewell, my blessing, season this in thee. Forest, Ophelia, he hath said to you? So please you, something touching the Lord Hamlet. Mary, well bethought. Tis told me he hath very oft of late given private time to you, and you yourself have of your audience been most free and bounteous. What is between you? Give me up the truth of it. He hath, my lord, of late made many tenders of his affections for Affection? <laughs> You speak like a green girl, unsifted in such perilous circumstance. Do you believe his tenders, as you call them? I do not know, my lord, what I should think. Mary, I'll teach you. Think yourself a baby. But he hath importuned me with love in honorable fashion. Oh. I've given countenance to his speech, my lord, for almost all the holy vows of heaven. Aye, springes to catch woodcocks. I do know, daughter, when the blood burns, how prodigal the soul lends the tongue vows. In few, Ophelia, do not believe his vows. Farewell! This is for all. I would not, in plain terms, have you so slander any moment leisure as to give words or talk to the Lord Hamlet. Look to it, I charge you. Come your ways. I shall obey.
I'll bite shrewdly. Very cold? It is nipping and an eager air. What are now? I think it likes to twirl. No, it is struck. Indeed? I heard it not. Then it draws near the season wherein the spirit held his want to walk. What does this mean, my lord? The king doth wake tonight and takes his rouse. That he drains his draughts of Rhenish down, the kettle drum and trumpet thus bray out the triumph of his pledge. Is it a custom? Aye, marry is. But to my mind, though I am native here and to the manner born, it is a custom more honored in the breach than the observance. This heavy-headed revel, east and west, makes us traduced and taxed of other nations. They keep us drunkards, and with swinish phrase soil our addition. So oft the chances and particular men that for some vicious mole of nature in them, but these men carrying, I say, the stamp of one defect, being nature's livery or fortune's star, their virtues else be they as pure as grace, as infinite as man may undergo, shall in the general censure take corruption from that particular fault. Look, my lord. It comes! Angels and ministers of grace, defend us. Say, why is this? Wherefore? What should we do? It beckons you to go away with it, as if it's some impartment it desired to you alone. Look with what courteous action it weighs you to a more removed ground. Not go with it. No, by no means. It will not speak. Then I will follow it. Do not, my lord. Why? What should be the fear? I do not set my life at a pin's fee. And for my soul, what can it do to that, being a thing immortal as itself? It waves me forth again. I'll follow it. One who attempted to board the flag, my lord, or to the dreadful summit of the cliff, the beetle saw its face into the sea, and there assumed some other horrible form, which might deprive your sovereignty of reason and draw you to madness. It waves me still. Go on. I'll follow thee. You shall not go, my lord. Hold off your hands. Be ruled. You shall not go. My fate cries out and makes each petty artery in this body as hardy as the Nemean lion's nerve. Still am I cold. Unhand me, gentlemen, by heaven, I'll make a ghost of him that lets me. I say away! There is something rotten in the state of Denmark. Heaven will direct. Where wilt thou lead me? Speak! I'll go no further! I will! Ghost. I am my father's spirit. Doom for a certain term to walk the night and for the day confined to fast in fire. Till the foul crimes done in my days of nature are burnt and purged away. But that I am forbid 
to tell the secrets of my prison house, I could a tale unfold whose lightest word would how up my soul, freeze thy young blood, make thy two eyes like stars, start from their spheres. But this eternal blazon must not be two years of flesh and blood. List, list, oh list, if ever thou didst thy dear father love, oh God, revenge is foul and most unnatural murder. Murder? Murder, most foul. As in the best it is, but this most foul, strange, and unnatural. Haste me to know it, that I with wings as swift as meditation, or the thoughts of love may sweep to my avenge. Now, Hamlet, here, it is given out that sleeping in my orchard, a serpent stung me. So the whole ear of Denmark is by a forged process of my death frankly abused. But no, thou noble youth, the serpent that did sting thy father's life, now wears his crown. Oh, my prophetic soul, my uncle. I, that incestuous, that adulterate beast with witchcraft of his wits, one to his shameful lust, the will of my most seeming virtuous queen. Oh, Hamlet, what a falling off was there for me, whose love was of that dignity, that it went hand in hand, even with the vow I made to her in marriage. So, Methinks I sent the morning air. Brief, let me be. Sleeping within my orchard, my custom always in the afternoon, upon my secure hour, thy uncle stole with juice of cursed heaven and in a vial, and in the porches of mine ears did pour the leprous distillment whose effect holds such an enmity with blood of man that swift as quicksilver it courses through the natural gates of the knowledge of the body. So did it mine. And the most instant tatter barked about most lazar-like with vile and loathsome curse all my true body. Oh! Oh! However, thou pursuest this act, taint not thy mind, nor let thy soul contrive against thy mother aught, and leave her to heaven, and to those thorns that in her bosom lodge to prick and sting her. Very well, at once. The glowworm shows the matin to be near and begins to pale his unaffectual fire. Adieu. Adieu. Adieu.
instant old but bear me stiffly up. Remember me, I, thou poor ghost, while memory holds a seat in this distracted globe. Remember thee. Yea, from the table of my memory, I wipe away all trivial fond records, all saws of books, all forms, all precious past that youth and observation copied there, and thy commandment all alone shall live within the book and volume of my brain, and mixed with baser matter, yes, by heaven, oh, most pernicious woman. Oh, Willard! Willard! Smiling, Daphrin My tables. My tables. Meet it as I set it down that one way smile and smile and be a villain. At least I'm sure it may be so in Denmark. So, Uncle, there you are. Now to my word. It is adieu, adieu. Remember me. I have sweet. My Lord! My noble lord, what news, my lord? Oh, oh, wonderful. Good, my lord, tell it. Nay, you'll reveal it. Not I, my lord, by heaven. No, I, my lord. I'll say you then, what heart of man once think it. But you'll be secret. Aye, by, by heaven, heaven, my, heaven, my lord. lord. There's an air of villain dwelling in all Denmark, but he's an errant knave. <laughs> there needs no ghost, my lord, come from the grave to tell us this. <laughs> My right. You are in the right. And so without more circumstance at all, I hold it fit that we shake hands and part. You as your business and desire shall point you, for every man hath business and desire such as it is. And for mine own poor part, look you, I'll go pray. <laughs> These are but wild and whirling words, my lord. I'm sorry they offend you heartily, yes, please, heartily. There's no offence, my lord. Yes, by St. Patrick, but there is her issue. And much offence, too. Touching this vision here, it is an honest ghost, that let me tell you. For your desire to know what is between us, or master it as you may. And now, good friends, as you are friends, scholars and soldiers, Give me one poor request. What is, my lord, we will. Never make known what you have seen tonight. My lord, my lord we will, will not. Never swear it. In faith, my lord, not I. Nor I, my lord, in faith. Upon my sword. My lord, we have sworn already. Indeed, upon my sword, indeed. Swear. Consent to swear. Propose the oath, my lord. Never to speak of this that you have seen. Swear by my sword. Swear. Then we'll shift our ground. Come hither, gentlemen, and lay your hands again upon my sword. Never to speak of this that you have heard. Swear by my sword. Swear! I dare not, but this is wondrous strange. And therefore, as a stranger, 
give it welcome. There are more things in heaven and earth or issue than are dreamt of in our philosophy. But come, here as before, never so help you mercy, how strange or odd so e'er I dare myself, as I perchance hereafter shall think meet to put an antique disposition on, that you, at such time seeing me, never shall with arms encumber thus, or this head shake, or by pronouncing of some doubtful phrase as well, well, we know, or we could, and if we would, or if we list to speak, or there be and if there might, or any such ambiguous giving out to note that you know aught of me, this not to do, so grace and mercy at your most need help you, swear! Rest, rest, perturbed spirit. So, gentlemen, with all my love, I do commend me to you. And what so poor a man as Hamlet is may do to express his love and friending to you, God willing, shall not lack. Let us go in together. And still your fingers on your lips I pray. Time is out of joint. Oh, cursed spite that ever I was born to set it right. Welcome, dear Rosencrantz and Guildenstern. The need we have to use you did provoke our hasty sending. Something have you heard of Hamlet's transformation? So call I it, sith nor the exterior nor the inward man resembles what it was. What it should be more than his father's death that thus hath put him so much from the understand of himself, I cannot deem of. I entreat you both Vouchsafe your rest here in our court some little time. So buy your companies to draw him on to pleasures and to gather so much as from occasions you may glean. We both obey. And here give up ourselves in the full bent to lay our services freely at your feet. To be commanded. Thanks, Rosencrantz, and gentle Guildenstern. Thanks, Guildenstern, and gentle Rosencrantz. And I beseech you instantly to visit my too much changed son. Ah. Uh. Heavens make our presence and our practices pleasant. And helpful to him. Aye. Amen. The ambassadors from Norway, my good lord, are joyfully returned. Uh, still has been the father of good news. Am I, my lord? I assure you, my good liege, I hold my duty as I hold my soul, both to my God and to my gracious king. And I can think, or else this brain of mine hunts not the trail of policy so sure as it hath used to do, that I have found the very cause of Hamlet's lunacy. Oh, speak of that. That I do long to hear. I doubt it is no other but the main, his father's death, and our own hasty marriage. I will be brief. Your noble son is mad. Mad, call I it. For to define true madness, what is but to be nothing else but mad. But let that go. No oh, matter. With less art. Matter, I swear I use no art at all. That he is mad, it is true. It is true. It is pity. And... Um, but it is, it is true, a foolish figure, but farewell it, for I will use no art. Mad, let us grant him then. And now remains that we find out the cause of this effect, or rather say, the cause of this defect, for this effect defective comes by cause. Thus it remains, and the remainder thus perpend. I have a daughter, have while she is mine who in her duty and obedience mark 
hath shown me this power. Gather and surmise to the celestial and my soul's idol, the most beautified Ophelia. That's an ill phrase. It's a vile phrase. Beautified is a vile phrase. But you shall hear. Thus, in her excellent white bosom, these, <clears throat> etc. Came this from Hamlet to her. Good madam, stay a while, I will be faithful. Doubt thou the stars are fire. Doubt that the sun doth move. Doubt truth to be a liar, but never doubt I love. Oh dear Ophelia, I am ill at these numbers. I have not art to reckon my groans. But that I love thee best, O oh, most best believe it, adieu. Thine evermore, most dear lady, whilst this machine is to him. Hamlet. This, in obedience, hath my daughter shown me, and more above, hath his solicitings, as they fell out by time, by means and place, all given to mine ear. How hast thou received his love? As my good lord did command, I did repel his letters, and denied his access to me. That hath made him mad. I am sorry that with better heed and judgment I had not quoted him. I feared he did but trifle and meant to wreck thee. What do you think of me? As of a man faithful and honourable? I would fain prove so, but what might you think when I had seen this hot love on the wing? As I perceived it, I must tell you that before my daughter told me. What might you or my dear majesty or queen here think if I had looked upon this love with idle sight? What might you think? No. I went round to work. And my young mistress, thus I did bespeak Lord Hamlet, is a prince out of thy sphere. This must not be. And then I precepts gave her that she should lock herself from his resort, admit no messengers, receive no tokens. Which done, she took the fruits of my advice. And he, repulsed a short tale to make, fell into a sadness, then into a fast, then into a lightness, and by this declension into the very madness wherein now he raves. And all we mourn for. Do you think this? It may be very like. Hath there been such a time, I would fain know that, that I have positively said tis so, when it proved otherwise? Not that I know. <coughs> Take this from this, if this be otherwise. How may we try this further? You know sometimes he walks four hours together here in the lobby. So he does indeed. At such a time I'll loose my daughter to him. Be you and I behind an arras then, mark the encounter. If he love her not, and be not from his reason fallen thereon, let me be no assistant for a state, but keep a farm and carters. We will try it. Look where sadly the poor wretch comes reading. Away, I do beseech you both away. I'll board him presently. Oh, give me leave. How does my good Lord Hamlet? Well, God of mercy. Do you know me, my lord? Excellent, well. Uh. <laughs> um, you're, you're a fishmonger. Not I, my lord. Oh, then I would you were so honest a man. Honest, my lord? Aye, sir. For to be honest as this world goes, is to be one man picked out of 10,000. <laughs> That's very true, my lord. For if the sun breed maggots, 
<laughs> in a dead dog being a good kissing carrier. <laughs> <laughs> ah, have you a daughter? I have, my lord. Let her not walk in the sun. Conception's a blessing. But as your daughter may conceive, friend, look to it. <laughs> Still harping on my daughter. Yet he knew me not at first. He said I was a fishmonger. He is far gone. <sighs> far gone. And truly, in my youth, I suffered much extremity from love. Very near this. I will speak to him again. What do you read, my lord? Hmm? Uh, words. 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 What is the matter, my lord? Between who? <laughs> I mean the matter that you read, my lord. Slander, sir. <laughs> For the satirical rogue says here that old men have grey beards, <laughs> that their faces are wrinkled, their eyes purging thick amber and plum tree gum. <laughs> that they have a plentiful lack of wit, <laughs> together with the most weak hands. <laughs> All which, sir, though I most powerfully and potently believe, yet I hold it not honestly to have it thus set down. For yourself, sir, shall grow old as I am, if like a crab you could go backward. Though this be madness, yet there's method in it. <laughs> Will you? Walk out of the air, my lord. Into my grave? Indeed, that is out of the air. How pregnant sometimes his replies are. I will leave him and suddenly contrive the means of meeting between him and my daughter. My honorable lord, I will most humbly take my leave of you. You cannot, sir, take from me anything that I would more willingly part with all. Except my life? Hmm? Except my life? <laughs> Except my be or not to be, that is the question, whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, or to take arms against a sea of troubles, and by opposing sleep no more, and by a sleep to say we end the heartache and the thousand natural shocks that flesh is heir to, it is a consummation devoutly to be wished. To die. To sleep. Sleep, perchance to dream. Aye, there's the rub. For in that sleep of death, what dreams may come when we have shuffled off this mortal coil must give us pause. There's the respect that makes calamity of so long life. For who would bear the whips and scorns of time? The oppressor's wrong, the proud man's cudgel, the pangs of despised love, the law's delay, the insolence of office, 
the spurns that patient merit of the unworthy takes, when he himself might his quietus make with a bare bodkin. Who would fardels bear to grunt and sweat under a weary life but that the dread of something after death, that undiscovered country from whose poor no traveler returns, puzzles the will and makes us rather bear those ills we have and fly to others that we know not of. Thus conscience doth make cowards of us all. And thus the native hue of resolution is sickly dwell with the pale cast of thought. And enterprises of great pith and moment with this regard their currents turn awry and lose the name of action. It's off to now. Of fair Ophelia, nymph, in my orisons be all my sins remembered. Good, my lord. How does your honour, Miss Meniadi? I humbly thank thee. Well, well, well. My lord, I have remembrances of yours. I have long and long to be delivered. I pray you now, see them. No, not I. I never gave you aught. I honoured Lord. You know right well you did. And with them words, so sweet breath composed has made the things more rich. Their perfume lost. Take these again. What of the noble mind, rich gifts, wax poor when givers prove unkind. There, my lord. Ah, are you honest? My lord. Are you fair? What means your lordship? That if you be honest and fair, your honesty should admit no discourse to your beauty. I did love thee once. Indeed, my lord. You made me believe so. You should not have believed me. For virtue cannot so inoculate our old stock, but we shall relish of it. I loved you not. I was the more deceived. Get thee to a nunnery. Why wouldst thou be a breeder of sinners? I am myself indifferent, honest, but yet I could accuse me of such things. It were better my mother had not borne me. I'm very proud, revengeful, ambitious, with more offences at my beck than I have thoughts to put them in, imagination to give them shape or time to act them in. What should such fellows as I do, crawling between heaven and earth? We are arrant knaves, all, believe none of us. Go thy ways to a nunnery. Where's your father? At home, my lord. Then let the doors be shut upon him, that he may play the fool no more in his own house. Farewell. Oh, help him, you sweet heavens. If thou dost marry, I'll give thee this plate for thy dowry. Be thou as chaste as ice, as pure as snow, thou shalt not escape calumny. Well, get thee to a nunnery, go, farewell! For if thou wilt needs marry, marry a fool, for wise men know well enough what monsters you make of them. 
to a nunnery, go and quickly do farewell. Oh, heavenly powers, restore him. I've heard of your paintings too well enough. God, I've given you one face. Make yourselves another. You jig, you amble, you lisp. Nickname God's creatures and make your wantonness your ignorance. Go to, I'll no more on't. It hath made me mad. I say there will be no more marriages! Those that are married already, all but one shall live. The rest shall keep as they are. To a nunnery. Go. Oh, what a noble mind is here all thrown. Courtiers, soldiers, scholars, eye, tongue, and sword. Expectancy and rose of the fair state. Glass of fashion, mold of form. Observed of all observers, quite, quite dark. I, ladies, most deject and wretched, suck the honey of his music vows. Now see that noble, most sovereign reason, like sweet bells, jangled, out of tune and harsh. That unmatched form and feature of blown youth, blasted with ecstasy. Oh, woe is me, to have seen what I have seen, and see what I see. Love, his affections do not that way tend, nor what he spake, though it lacked form a little, was not like madness. There's something in his soul o'er which his melancholy sits on brood. And I do doubt the hatch and the disclose will be some danger which to prevent. I have in quick determination thus set down, he shall with speed to England for the demand of our neglected tribute. Haply the seas and countries different with variable objects shall expel this something settled matter in his heart but on his brain still beating puts him thus from fashion of himself. <laughs> what think you, aunt? It shall do well, but yet do I believe the origin and commencement of his grief sprung from neglected love. Come now, Athenia. You need not tell us what Lord Hamlet said. We heard it all. My lord, do as you please. To England send him, or confine him where your wisdom best shall think. Madness in great ones must not on watch go. My most dear lord. My excellent good friends, how dost thou gild and stir? Ah, Rosencrantz, good lads, how do you both? As the indifferent children of the earth. Happy in that we are not over-happy. What's the news? <laughs> None, my lord. 
but that the world's grown honest. Now, then is doomsday near, <laughs> but your news is not true. Let me question more in particular. What have you, my good friends, deserved at the hands of fortune that she sent you to prison hither? Oh, prison, my lord? Well, Denmark's a prison. Uh, then is the world one? A goodly one, in which there are many confines, wards and dungeons, Denmark being one of the worst. Well, we think not so, my lord. Well, then tis none to you, for there is nothing either good or bad, but thinking makes it so. To me, it is a prison. Why? Then your ambition makes it one. Tis too narrow for your mind. Oh, God, I could be bounded in a nutshell and count myself a king of infinite space. Were it not that I have bad dreams, shall we to court, for by my fay I cannot reason. We'll, we'll wait, wait upon, upon you. you. In the beaten way of friendship. Thank you, Adelsonor. To visit you, my lord. No other occasion. Beggar that I am, I am even poor in thanks, but I thank you. In short, dear friends, my thanks are too dear a halfpenny. Were you not sent for? Is it your own inclining? Is it a free visitation? <laughs> come, come, deal justly with me. Come, come, nay, speak. What should we say, my lord? Why, anything but to the purpose. You were sent for. There is a kind of confession in your looks that your modesties have not craft enough to colour. I know the good king and queen have sent for you. And to what end, my lord? For that you must teach me. My lord, we were sent for. I will tell you why. So shall my anticipation prevent your discovery and your secrecy to the king and queen moat no feather. I have of late, but wherefore I know not, lost all my mirth, <laughs> forgone all custom of exercises, and indeed it goes so heavily with my disposition that this goodly frame, the earth, seems to me a sterile promontory. <laughs> this most excellent canopy, the air, look you, this brave or hanging firmament, this majestical roof, fretted with golden fire, why, it appeareth no other thing to me than a foul and pestilent congregation of vapours. What a piece of work is a man. How noble in reason. How infinite in faculty. In form and moving. How express and admirable. In action, how like an angel. In apprehension, how like a god. The beauty of the world paragon of animals. And yet to me, what is this quintessence of dust? Man delights not me. <laughs> no, nor women neither. Though by your smiling you seem to say so. My lord, there was no such stuff in my thoughts. Now why did you laugh then when I said man delights not me? Well, to think, my lord, if you delight not in man, what Lenten entertainment the players shall receive from you. We coated them on the way, and hither are they coming to offer you service. He that plays the king shall be welcome. His <laughs> majesty shall have tribute of me. The clown shall make those laugh whose lungs are tickle of a seer. And the lady shall speak her mind freely, or the blank verse shall haunt for her. <laughs> Gentlemen, you are welcome to us and all. Well, your hands, come then. But my uncle, father, and aunt, mother are deceived. In what, my lord? I am but mad. Nor, nor west, when the wind is southerly, I know a hawk from a handsaw. <laughs> well, be with you, gentlemen. Um, hark you, Guildenstern, and you too, at each ear a hearer. I will prophesy. He comes to tell me of the players. Mark it. My lord, I have news to tell you. My lord, I have news to tell you. When Rossius was an actor in Rome. <laughs> The actors are come hither, my lord. Birds, 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 birds. birds. Upon thine honor. And then came each actor on his ass. The best actors in the world. Either for tragedy, comedy, history, pastoral, pastoral, comical, historical, pastoral, tragical, historical, tragical, comical, historical, pastoral. <laughs> These are the only men. Oh, Jephthah, judge of Israel, what a treasure hast thou. What a treasure had he, my lord? Why, one fair daughter, and no more, the which he loved passing well. Still, 
upon my daughter. You're welcome, masters! <laughs> welcome all! <laughs> I'm, I'm glad to see thee well. Welcome, good friends! <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, my old friend. My face is balanced since I saw thee last. Comes thou to beard me in Denmark? <laughs> what, my young lady and mistress? By lady, your ladyship is nearer to heaven than when I saw thee last by the altitude of a Chopin. Pray God your voice, like a piece of uncurrent gold, be not cracked within the ring. <laughs> <laughs> Masters, you are all welcome. <laughs> We lean to it like French falconers. Fly at anything we see. We'll have a speech straight. Come, give us a taste of your quality. Come, a, a passionate speech. What speech, my lord? I heard thee speak me a speech once, but it was never acted. Or if it was, not above once. For the play, I remember, please not the million, it was caviar to the general. <laughs> but it was as I had received it, and others whose judgment in such matters cried in the top of mine. An excellent play. One speech in it I chiefly loved. It was Aeneas' tale to Dido. Oh. And there about of it, especially when he speaks of Priam's slaughter, uh, if it live in your memory, begin at this line. Let me see, let me see. Uh, the rugged Pyrrhus, like the Hyrcanian beast. It is not so. It begins with Pyrrhus. The... Uh, Hellish. The hellish Pyrrhus, old grandsire Priam seeks. Oh, God, my lord, that was good. Anon he finds him. Striking too short of Greeks, his antique sword rebellious to his arm, lies where it falls, repugnant to command. Unequal matched Pyrrhus that Priam drives. In rage strikes wide, but with the whip and wind of his felt sword, the unnerved father falls. There, senseless Ilium, seeming to feel this blow, with burning top stoops to his base, and with a hideous crash takes prisoner Pyrrhus here. For lo, his sword, which was declining on the milky head of Reverend Priam, seemed in the air to stick. This is too long. Shelter the barbers with your beard. Uh, Pretty, say on. He's for a jig or a tail of bawdry or he sleeps. Say on. Come to Hecuba. But who? Oh, who had seen the mobled queen? The mobled queen. That's good. Mobled queen. That's good. Run barefoot. Up and down, threatening the flames with bison rumour, clout upon that head where late the diadem stood, and for a robe about a lank and all our timid loins, a blanket in the alarm of fear caught up. Who this had seen with tongue in venom steep against fortune's state would treason have pronounced. But if the gods themselves had seen her then, when she saw Pyrrhus make malicious sport in mincing with his sword, her husband's limb. The instant burst of clamor that she made. Unless things mortal move them not at all, would have made milk the burning eyes of heaven and passion in the gods. Look, whether he hath not turned his color and hath tears in his eyes. Pray you, no more.
as well. I'll have thee speak out the rest soon. My lord, will you see the players well bestowed? Do you hear? Let them be well used, for they are the abstract and brief chronicles of the time. After your death, you were better have a bad epitaph than their ill report while you live. My lord, I will use them according to their desert. Well, God's bodikin's man, much better. Use every man after his desert, and who shall escape whipping? <laughs> use them after your own honor and dignity. The less they deserve, the more merit is in your bounty. Take them in. Come, sir. Follow him, friends. We will hear a play tomorrow. <laughs> Just hear me, old friend. Can you play the murder of Gonzalo? Ah, my lord. We'll have it tomorrow night. You, you could, for a need, study a speech of some dozen or sixteen lines that I will set down and insert in it for you, could you not? Aye, my lord. Very well. Follow that lord. And uh, look you, mock him not. My good friends, I'll leave you till tonight. You're welcome to Elsinore. Good, my lord. I so. God by you. Oh, what a rogue and peasant slave am I. Is it not monstrous that this player here, but in a fiction, in a dream of passion, could force his soul so to his own conceit that from her working all his visage wan, tears in his eyes, distractions aspect, a broken voice, and his whole function suiting with forms to his conceit and all for nothing, for Hecuba. What's Hecuba to him, or he to Hecuba, that he should weep for her? What would he do, and he the motive and the cue for passion that I have? He would drown the stage with tears, Make mad the guilty, appall the free, confound the ignorant, and amaze indeed the very faculties of eyes and ears. Yet I, a dull and muddy metal rascal, peep like John of dreams, unpregnant of my cause and can say nothing. No, not for a king upon whose property and most dear life a damned defeat was made. Bloody, bawdy villain. Remorseless, treacherous, lecherous, Kindless villain! <laughs> oh, villain! This is most brave, that I, the son of a dear father murdered, prompted to my revenge by heaven and hell, must like a whore unpack my heart with words and fall a cursing like a very drab, a scullion, fire and dark, oh. about my brain. Guilty creatures sitting at a play have, by the very cunning of the scene, been struck so to the soul that presently they have proclaimed their malefactions. 
For murder, though it have no tongue, will speak with most miraculous organ. I'll have these players play something like the murder of my father. Before my uncle, I'll observe his looks. I'll tempt him to the quick. If he but lies, I know my cross. The spirit I have seen may be the devil, and the devil had power to assume a pleasing shape. Yea, and perhaps out of my weakness and my melancholy, as he is very potent with such spirits, abuses me to damn me. I'll have grounds more relative than this. The play's the thing wherein I'll catch the conscience of the king. Here, sweet lord, at your service. Now, our dean is just a man, as ere my conversation coped with all. Oh, my dear lord. Nay, do not think I flatter. Give me that man that is not passion's slave, and I will wear him in my heart's core, I in my heart of heart, as I do thee. Something too much of this. the play tonight before the king. One scene of it comes very near the circumstance which I have told thee of my father's death. I pray thee, when thou seest that act of foot, even with the very comet of my soul, observe mine uncle, if his occulted guilt do not itself unkennel in one speech, it is a damned ghost that we have seen, and my imaginations are as foul as Vulcan's stilly. My pretty, give him heedful note. For I, mine eyes, will rivet to his face. And after we will both our judgments join in censure of his seeming. Well, my lord, if he's still lord, the whilst this play is playing, and scape detecting, I will pay with that. You're coming to the play. I must be idle. Get you a place. Cousin Hamlet. Excellent the faith in the chameleon's dish. I eat the air, promise crammed. You cannot feed capon so. <laughs> I have nothing with this answer, Hamlet. These words are not mine. <laughs> no, not mine now. <laughs> my lord. You played once at the university, you say? I did, my lord, and was accounted a good actor. Now, what did you enact? I did enact uh, Julius Caesar. Ah? I was killed in the capital. Brutus killed me. But it was a brute part of him to kill so capital a calf there. <laughs> Come hither, my good Hamlet. Sit by me. No, good mother. He is metal more attractive. <laughs> oh, you mark that. Lady, shall I lie in your lap? No, my lord. I mean my head upon your lap. I know. You think I'm in country matters? <laughs> I think nothing, my lord. That's a fair thought to lie between men's legs. What is my lord? Nothing. You are many, my lord. <laughs> Who I? I, my lord. Oh, God, your own did make it. But well, what should a man do but be merry? For look you how cheerfully my mother looks, and my father died within two hours. Nay, it is twice two months, my lord. <gasps> so long. Nay, then let the devil wear black, for I'll have a suit of service. What? Died two months ago and not forgotten yet. Uh, and let's hope a great man's memory may outlive his life half a year. Uh, for us and for our tragedy, here, stooping to your clemency, we beg your hearing patiently. 
It's just the prologue of the pussy of a ring. It is brief, my lord. As woman's love. <laughs> Madam, I like you this play. The lady does protest too much, methinks. Oh, but she'll keep her word. Have you heard the argument? Is there no offences? Oh, no, no, they do but jest. Poison in jest. No offence in the world. What do you call the play? The Mouse Trap. Huh? Mary, how? Trappically. This play is the image of a murder done in Vienna. Gonzago is the Duke's name, his wife, Baptista. You shall see anon, tis a knavish piece of work. But what of that, Your Majesty, and we have free souls, it touches us not. Let the gallant jade wince, our withers are unwrung. Uh, this is one Lucianus, nephew to the king. Poisons him in the garden for his estate. His name is Gonzago. The story is extant and written in very choice Italian. You shall see anon how the murderer gets the love of Gonzago's wife! What? 
Fight it with false fire. How oh, fares my lord? Give all the play. Upon the top of the point. I did very well noted. Aha! Come, some music, come. The recorders. For if the king like not the comedy, well, then be like he likes it not. Uh, per day. <laughs> come, some music. Good, my lord, not take me a word with you. Sir, a whole history. The king, sir. Aye, sir, what of him? Is in his retirement marvellous distempered. With drink, sir? No, my lord, rather with choler. Then your wisdom should show itself the more richer to signify this to the doctor, for for me to put him to his purgation would perhaps plunge him into far more colour. <laughs> my lord, put your discourse into some frame and start not so wildly from my affair. Uh, I'm tame, sir. Uh, pronounce. The Queen. Mm -hmm. Your mother, in most great affliction of spirit, has sent me to you. You're welcome. Hey, good, my lord, this courtesy is not of the right breed. If it shall please you to make me a wholesome answer, I will... Do your mother's commandment, if not your pardon, and my return shall be the end of my business. Well, sir, I, I, I cannot... What, my lord? ...make you a wholesome answer. My witch diseased. But uh, such answer as I can make, sir, you shall command, or rather, as you say, my mother, therefore, no more, but to the matter. My mother, you say... And thus, she says, your behavior hath struck her into amazement and admiration. Oh, wonderful son that can so astonish a mother. But is there no sequel to the heels of this mother's admiration, in part? She desires to speak with you in her closet ere you go to bed. You shall obey. Were she ten times our mother? Ah, the recorders. Let me see one. Will you play upon this pipe? My lord, I cannot. No, I pray you. Believe me, I cannot. I beseech you. My lord, I know no touch of it. It's as easy as lying. Splud, do you think I'm easier to be played on than a pipe? Call me what instrument you will, though you can fret me, yet cannot you play upon me. God bless you, sir. My lord, the queen would we'll speak, speak with, with you in presently. presently. Do you see yonder cloud that's almost in shape of a camel? I, the matter, tis like a camel indeed. Mm -hmm. Thinks it's like a weasel. Back like a weasel? Or, or like a whale? Very like a whale. And I will come to my mother by and by. <laughs> they fool me to the top of my belt. I, I will come by and by. I will say so. By and by is easily said. Leave me. Friends. It is now the very witching time of night. When churchyards yawn and hell itself breathes out contagion to the world. Now could I drink hot blood and do such bitter business as the day would quick to look on. Now to my mother. O oh heart, lose not thy nature. Let not ever the soul of Nero enter his firm bosom. Let me be cruel, not unnatural. I will speak daggers to her, but use none.
I like him not. Nor stands it safe with us to let his madness range. Therefore prepare you. I, your commission, will forthwith dispatch, and he to England shall along with you. The terms of our estate may not endure hazard so dangerous as doth hourly grow out of his lunacies. Arm you, I pray, to this speedy voyage, for we will set a foot upon this freer which now goes too free-footed. We'll haste us. My lord, he's going to his mother's closet. Behind the arras, I'll convey myself to hear the process. Fare you well, my liege. I'll call upon you ere you go to bed and tell you what I know. Thanks, dear my lord. Are my offenses rank? It smells to heaven. It hath the primal eldest curse upon us. A brother's murder. Can I not? Though inclination be as sharp as will. My stronger guilt defeats my strong intent, and like a man in double business bound, I stand in pause where I should first begin, and doth neglect. What if this cursed hand were thicker than itself in brother's blood? Is there not rain enough in the sweet heavens to wash it white as snow? Where to serves mercy but to confront the visage of offense? And what's in prayer but that this twofold force to be forestalled ere we come to fall? Or oh, pardon? And I look up. My fault is past. But oh, what form of prayer can serve my turn? Forgive me my foul murder. That cannot be, since I am still possessed of those effects for which I did the murder. My crown, mine own ambition, and my queen. May one be pardoned and retain the offense. So he goes to heaven, and so will my revenge. That would be scant. A villain kills my father, and for that I, his sole son, to this same villain, send to heaven. And am I then revenged? 
to take him in the purging of his soul when he is fit and seasoned for this passage. No. Absurd. I know there are more hurried hint when he is drunk, asleep, or in his rage, or in the incestuous pleasure of his bed, then trip him that his heels may kick at heaven and his soul may be as damned and black as hell where to it goes. My mother stays. This physic doth prolong my sickly days. A word, Friar. A thought from men below. Words without thoughts are never to heaven, go. He will come straight. Look you, lay home to him. Tell him his pranks have been too broad to bear with. And that your grace hath screened and storm between much heat and him. I'll silence me in here. Pray you be one with him. With the door, I hear him coming. Now, Mother, what's the matter? Hamlet, thou hast thy father much offended. Mother, you have my father much offended. Come, come, you answer with an idle tongue. Go, go, you question with a wicked tongue. Why, how now, Hamlet? Why, what's the matter now? Hast thou forgot me? No, by the rood, not so. You are the queen, your husband's brother's wife. And would it were not so, you are my mother. Then I'll set those to you that can speak. Come and sit you down. You shall not burn! You go not till I set you up a glass where you may see the inmost part of you. Why, what did I do? Not on the mother of it! Is it the king? Oh, what a rash and bloody deed is this. A bloody deed. Almost as bad, good mother, as kill a king and marry with his brother. As kill a king? Aye, lady. T'was my word. A wretched, rash, intruding fool. Farewell. I took thee for thy better. Take thy fortune. Thou find'st to be too busy is some danger. Leave ringing of your hands. Peace, sit you down and let me wring your heart. <laughs> so I shall if it be made impenetrable. What have I done that thou dearest wag thy tongue in noise to rule against me? Look here. Upon this picture. And on this. A counterfeit presentment of two brothers. See what a grace was seated on this brow. Hyperion's curl, the front of Jove himself. An eye like Mars to threaten and command. A station like the Herald Mercury, new lighted on a temple kissing hill. A combination and a form indeed where every god did seem to set his seal to give the world assurance of a man. This was your husband. Look, you know what follows. Here is your husband. Like a mildewed ear, blasting his wholesome brother. Have you eyes? Could you on this fair mountain leave to feed and batter on this poor? Ah, have you eyes? You cannot call it love. For at your age the hair day and the blood is tame. It's humble and waits upon the judgment. And what judgment would step from this to this? Oh, shame, where is thy blush? Rebellious hell! If thou canst mutant in a matron's bones to flaming youth, let virtue be as wax and melt in her own fire! Oh, Hamlet! 
speak no more. Oh, I shut my eyes into my very soul. And now I see such black and graded spots. It will not leave that oh, deep. The black like sweat of an inseamed bed, stewed with <laughs> corruption, honeying and making love among the nasty stars. Oh, no more, no more, sweet Hamlet. These words like daggers enter in my ears. Oh, no more, sweet The murderer Hamlet. of the villain. A slave to the 20th part the time of your proceeding, Lord. A vice of kings. A cut purse of the empire and the rule that from a shelf the precious diamond stole and put it in his pocket. Ah, no a king of shreds and passion. Save me and hover on me with your wings, you heavenly God. What would your gracious figure? Alas, he's mad. Do you not come your tardy son to chide? But lapsed in time and passion, let's go by the important acting of your dread command. Oh, say. with you, lady. Alas, how is it with you that you do bend your eye on vacancy and with the incorporal air hold discourse? Oh, gentle son, upon the heat and flame of thy distemper sprinkle cool patience. Whereon do you look? On him. On him. Look you how pale he glares. His form and cause conjoined, preaching to stones would make them capable. Do not look upon me. With this piteous action, you convert me in my stern effects, and what I have to do will want true color, tears, but chance for blood. To whom do you speak this? Do you see nothing there? Nothing at all. But all that is, I see. Now, did you nothing here? Nothing but ourselves. Look how it steals away. My father, in his habit, as he lived. Look where it goes. He now, out of the portal. Is the very coinage of your brain. This bodiless creation. Ecstasy is very cunning in. Ecstasy? My pulse as yours doth temperately keep time and makes us healthful music. It is not madness that I have uttered. Put me to the test and I the matter will reword which madness would gamble from. Oh, mother, for love of grace, lay not that fluttering unction to your soul that not your trespass but my madness speaks. Confess yourself to heaven. Repent what's past. Avoid what is to come. Do not spread the compost on the weeds to make them rancor. Oh, Hamlet, thou hast cleft my heart in twain. Oh, throw away the worser part of it and live the purer with the other half. Good night. Go not to mine uncle's bed. Assume a virtue, if you have it not. Refrain tonight. And that will lend a kind of easiness to the next abstinence, the next more easy. Once more, good night. And when you are desirous to be blessed, I'll blessing beg of you. this same Lord I do repent. But heaven hath pleased it so to punish me with this and this with me that I must be their scourge and minister. 
I will bestow him and will answer well the death I gave him. So again, good night. I must be cruel only to be kind. First bad begins and worse remains behind. One more word, good lady. Let the blood king tempt you again to bed. And let him put a pair of reachy kisses over paddling in your neck with his damn fingers. Make you to revel all this matter out that I essentially am not in madness, but mad in craft. To a good you let him know. Be thou assured, if words were made of breath and breath of life, I have no life to breathe what thou hast said to me. I must to England, you know that? Alack, I had forgot to so conclude it on. Those letters sealed. And my two schoolfellows, whom I will trust as I will adders fanged. They bear the mandate. They must sweep my way and marshal me to knavery. Oh, it is most sweet when in one line two crafts directly meet. This man shall set me packing. I'll lug the guts into the neighbor room. Mother. Good night. Indeed, this counselor is now most still, most secret and most grey, who was in life a foolish, prating knave. Come, sir, to draw towards an end with you. Good night, mother. Where's your son? Oh, my own lord. What have I seen tonight? What, Gertrude? How does Hamlet? Mad, as the seas and wind when both contend which is the mightier. In his lawless fit, behind the arras, hearing something stir, he whips out his rapier and cries, A rat, a rat, and in his brainish apprehension, kills the unseen good old man. Had been so with us had we been there. Where's he gone? To draw apart the body he hath killed. Or whom his very madness, like some ore among a mineral of metal's base, shows itself pure. He weeps for what is done. This Vile deed we must with all our majesty and skill both countenance and excuse. Oh, go then, sir. Hamlet in madness hath Polonius slain. Go seek him out, speak for him, bring the body into the chapel. I pray you haste in this. My soul is full of discord and dismay. What hath befallen? Where the dead body is bestowed, my lord, we cannot get from him. Where is he? Without, my lord, guarded to know your pleasure. Bring him before us. Oh, Gildenstern, bring in the lord. Now, Hamlet. Where's Polonius? 
At supper? At supper. <laughs> where? Uh, well, not where he eats, but uh, where he is eaten. A certain convocation of politic worms are in at him. Where is Polonius? In heaven. Send thither to see. If your messenger find him not there, seek him at the other place uh, yourself. But indeed, if you find him not within this month, you shall nose him as you go up the stairs into the lobby. Go seek him there. Then he will stay till you come. Hamlet, this deed for thine especial safety, which we tender as we dearly grieve for that which thou hast done, must send thee hence with fiery quickness. Therefore, prepare thyself for England. For England? Aye, Hamlet. Good! So is it, if thou knewest our purposes. I see a cherub that sees them. But come, for England. Farewell, dear mother. Thy loving father, Hamlet. My mother. Father and mother is man and wife. Man and wife is one flesh. And so, my mother. Come, for England! Follow him at foot. Tempt him with speed aboard. Away, for everything is sealed and done that else means on the affair. England, if my love thou holdst it aught, as my great power thereof may give thee sense, since yet thy cicatrice looks raw and red after the Danish sword, and thy free all pays homage to us. Thou mayst not coldly set my sovereign process which imports all full by letters conjuring to that effect the present death of Hamlet. Do it, England, for like the hectic in my bloody rages, and thou must cure me. Till I know it is done, how am my haps, my joys, were ne'er begun. over his kingdom. Sir, whose powers are these? They are of Norway, sir. What purpose, sir, I pray you? Against some part of Poland. Who commands them, sir? A nephew of old Norway, fought in brass. Goes it for some frontier? It goes to gain a little patch of ground that hath in it no profit but the name. To pay five ducats, five, I would not farm it. Why, then the Polak never will defend it. Yes, it is already garrisoned. God be with you, sir. 
God bless you, sir. Will it please you go, my lord? I'll be with you straight. Go a little before. How all occasions do inform against me and spur my dull revenge. What is a man if his chief good and market of his time be but to sleep and feed? A beast, no more. Sure he that made us with such large discourse, looking before and after, gave us not that capability and godlike reason to fust in us, unused. Witness this army, such mass and charge, led by a delicate and tender prince, whose spirit with divine ambition puffed makes mouths at the invisible event, exposing what is mortal and unsure to all that fortune, death and danger dare, even for an eggshell. How stand I then, hmm? and have a father killed, a mother stained, excitements of my reason and my blood, and let all sleep, while to my shame I see the imminent death of 20,000 men that for a fantasy and trick of fame go to their graves like beds. Oh. From this time forth, my thoughts be bloody or be nothing worth. speak with her. She is importunate, indeed distract. Her mood will needs be pitied. What would she have? She speaks much of her father. To a good she was spoken with, for she may strew dangerous conjectures and ill-breeding minds. Let her come in. this song. See you! Nay, pay you mark! He is dead and gone, lady. He is dead and gone at his head across green Ophelia. Be your mark! Why is his shoulder so hard? Look here, my lord. Ah, 
How do you, pretty lady? Well, God help you. <laughs> they say the owl was a baker's daughter. <laughs> Lord, we know what we are. And yet know not what we may be. table. Conceit upon her father. I pray you, let's have no more words of this. But when they ask you what it means, say you this. Tomorrow is St. Valentine's Day. All in the morning be time. And I am made at your window to be your valentine. So up he rose and donned his clothes and down the chamber door let in a maid that out Never departed more. Pretty Ophelia. How long has she been with us? I hope all will be well. But we must be patient. And yet I cannot choose but weep. To think that they could lay him in the cold ground. <laughs> My brother shall know of it. And so I thank you for your good counsel. <laughs> Come, my coach. <laughs> good night, ladies. Good night. Sweet ladies. Good night. <laughs> Good night. First, Polonius slain. Next, your son gone. And he must violent author of his own just remove. The people muddied. Thick and unwholesome in their thoughts and whispers for good Polonius' death. Poor Ophelia. Divided from herself and her fair judgment. Without the which we are pictures or mere beasts. Lastly. And as much containing as all this, her brother is in secret come from France. Feeds on his wonder, keeps his head in clouds and... Wants not buzzers to infect his ear with pestilent speeches of his father's death. Oh, Gertrude. Gertrude. When sorrows come, they come not single spies, but in battalion. I shall have all looked at this. Give these fellows some means to the king. They have letters for him. Ere we were two days old at sea, a pirate of very warlike appointment gave us chase. Finding ourselves too slow of sail, we put on a compelled valor. In the grapple, I boarded them, and on the instant they got clear of our ship, I alone became their prisoner. They have dealt with me like thieves of mercy, but they knew what they did. I am to do a good turn for them. Let the king have the letters I have sent, and repair thou to me with as much haste as thou wouldst fly death. I have words to speak in your ear will make thee dumb. These good fellows will bring me where I am, 
Rosencrantz and Guildenstern hold their course for England. Of them I have much to tell thee. Farewell. He that thou knowest thine Hamlet. naked on your kingdom. Tomorrow shall I beg leave to see your kingly eyes, when I shall, first asking your pardon there to recount the occasions of my sudden and more strange return. Hamlet. What should this mean? Are all the rest come back? Or is it some abuse? Or no such thing? Know you the hand? Is Hamlet's character, naked, and in the postscript here he says, alone. Can you advise me? I am lost in it, my lord. But let him come. It warms the very sickness of my heart that I shall live and tell him to his teeth. Thus didst thou. So you will not hold your meat to a piece. Do thine own, please. If he be now returned, I will work him to an exploit now ripe in my device, under the which he shall not choose but fail. And for his death, no wind of blame shall breathe, but even his mother shall unchance the practice and call it excellence. I will not you. The rather if you could devise it so that I might be the organ. It's all right. You have been talked of since your travel much, and that in Hamlet's hearing for quality. Well, if they say you shine. What part is that, my lord? Some two months hence, here was a gentleman of Normandy. He made confession of you and gave you such a masterly report for art and exercise of your defense of your rapier, most especially. And he cried out, "'Twould be a sight indeed if one could match you." So this report of his did Hamlet so envenom with his envy that he could nothing do but wish and beg your sudden coming or to play with him. Now, out of this. What out of this, my lord? What would you undertake to show yourself your father's son indeed, more than in words? To the church. No place indeed should murder St. Charles. Revenge should know no bounds. But Laertes. Hamlet, being returned, shall know you are come home. We'll put on those who praise your excellence and set a double varnish on the fame the Frenchman gave you. Bring you in fine together and wager on your heads. He, being remiss, most generous and free from all contriving, will not peruse the foils so that with ease or with a little shuffling, you may choose a sword unbated and in a pass of practice for quite it. For your thumb. I will do it. And for that purpose, I'll anoint my sword. I bought an unction of a mountebank, so mortal that but dip a knife in it, where it draws blood, no cataplasm so rare, collected from all symbols that have virtue under the moon, can save the thing from death that is but scratched with all. Now touch my point, this contagion, that if I call him slightly, it may be death. Let's further think on this. Soft, let me see. You make a solemn wager on your cunning. Hmm. I have it. When in your motions you are hot and dry, as make your bouts more violent to that end, and that heat calls for drink. 
I'll have prepared him a chalice for the nonce whereon but sipping. If he by chance escaped your venom stuck, our purpose may hold there. Ah, oh, sweet queen. One world doth tread upon another's heel, so fast they follow. Your sister's drowned, Laertes. Drowned? There is a willow, grows a slant a brook, that shows his hoar leaves in the glassy stream. There with fantastic garlands did she come, of crow flowers, Nettles, daisies, and long purples that liberal shepherds give a grosser name. But our cold maids do dead men's fingers call them. There on the pendant boughs, her coronet weeds clamoring to hang, an envious sliver broke when down her weedy trophies and herself fell in the weeping brook. Her clothes spread wide. And mermaid like a while they bore her up, which time she chanted snatches of old tunes as one incapable of her own distress. But long it could not be, till that her garments, heavy with their drink, pulled the poor wretch from her melodious lay to muddy death. She is drowned. 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 Do you, my lord, I have a speech of fire that fain would blaze, but that this folly doubts it. Gertrude, let's follow. How much I had to do to calm his rage. Now fear I this will give it start again. Therefore, let's follow. In you when I did love did love, I thought twas very sweet to contract oh, the time for ah, my behold. I thought there was nothing. Ah, me. Is this better than a feeling of his business that he sees? Uh, grave making? <laughs> Custom hath made it in him a property of easiness. Whose grave's this, Silver? Mine, sir. Ah, uh, patient today. Oh, I think it'd be thine indeed, for thou liest in it. You lie out on, sir. Therefore, it is not yours. For my part, I lie not in it. Yet it is mine. <coughs> Let us lie in it to be in it and say it is thine. It is for the dead, not for the quick. Therefore, thou liest. It is a quick lie, sir. To away again from me to you. <laughs> what man dost thou dig it for? For no man, sir. Well, what woman, then? For none, neither. Well, who's to be buried in it? One that was a woman, sir, but rest her soul, she's dead. How absolute the knave is. How long hast thou been grave maker? Of all the days of the year, I came to it the day our last King Hamlet all came forth in brass. How long is that since? Can I let you tell that? <laughs> Every fool can tell that. It was the day young Hamlet was born. He that's mad sent to England. Aye, marry. Well, why was he sent to England? <laughs> why? Because he was mad. He shall recover his wits there, if he do not. It's no great matter there. Why? It will not be seen in him there. There the men are as mad as he. How long will a man lie of the earth ere he rot? Faith, if he be not rotten before he die, as were many pocky courses nowadays that scarce hold the laying in. He will last you some eight year, nine year. Tanner will last you nine year. Well, why he more than another? Why, sir, his hide is so tanned with his trade that he keeps out water a great while. Water's a sort of care of your horse and dead body. Here's a skull now. 
Now, this skull has lain in the earth three and twenty years. Hmm. Whose was it? <laughs> oh, a horse and mad fellas it was. <laughs> Who do you think it was? <laughs> well, nay, I know not. <laughs> oh, oh, pestilence on him for a mad rogue. <laughs> I poured a flag in a Rhenish on my head once. <laughs> this same skull, sir. <laughs> It was Yorick's skull, <laughs> the king's jester. This? In that. Let me see. Alas, poor Yorick. I knew him, Horatio. A fellow of infinite jest, of most excellent fancy. He hath borne me on his back a thousand times. Now, how horrid in my imagination it is. My gorge rises at it. Here be those lips I have kissed, I know not how oft. Where be your jibes now? Your gambles, your songs, your flashes of merriment that were wont to set the table on a roar. Not one now to mock your own grinning. Quite chop-fallen. Now get you to my lady's chamber and tell her, let her paint an inch thick. To this favor she must come. Make her laugh at that. Pretty Horatio, tell me one thing. What's that, my lord? Does think Alexander looked to this fashion of the earth? In so. And smelt so? In so, my lord. To what base uses we may return, Horatio? Soft. Here comes the king. The queen, the courtiers. Who is this they follow in with such maimed rites? Country of Island Mark. What ceremony else? This is Laertes, a very noble youth, Mark. What ceremony else? Her obsequies have been as far enlarged as we have warranties. Her death was doubtful. And but the great command or sways the order, she should in ground unsanctified have lodged to the last trumpet. For charitable prayers, shards, flints and pebbles should be thrown on her. Yet here she has allowed her virgin chants, her maiden's truments and the bringing home of bill and burial. Must there no more be done? No more be done? We should profane the service of the dead to sing sage requiem and such rest to her as to peace-parted souls. Lay her in the earth. From her fair and unpolluted flesh may violets spring. I tell thee, churlish priest, a ministering angel shall my sister be when thou liest howling. What? The fair Ophelia? Sweets to the sweet. Farewell. I hope thou shouldst have been my Hamlet's wife. I thought thy bride bed to have decked, sweet maid. And not have strewed thy grave. Treble woe, fall ten times treble on that cursed head whose wicked deed thy most ingenious sense deprived thee of. Hold off the earth a while till I've caught her once all in my arms. Now pile your dust upon the quick and dead. Till of this flat. A mountain you have made to a top Ophelian on the sky a shed of blue Olympus. What is he whose grief bears such an emphasis? whose phrase of sorrow conjures the wandering stars and makes them stand like wonder-wounded hearers. 
This is I, Hamlet the Dane! The devil take thy soul! Prince not well. I'd really take thy fingers from my throat. Though I be splendid of rash, yet have I something in me dangerous? Lock them asunder. Hamlet! Hamlet! Good my lord, be quiet. Why, I will fight with him upon this theme until my eyelids will no longer oh, wag. My son, what theme? I loved Ophelia. Forty thousand brothers with all their quantity of love could not make up my son. What wouldst thou do for her? Oh, he is madly. He's oh, love so... of God so bad. Show me what thou do. Would weep, would fight, would tear thyself, would drink up eyes, would eat a crocodile, I'll do it. Just come here to whine, to I'll feast me with leaping in her grave, be buried quick with her, and so will I. And if thou pray to mountains, let them throw millions of acres on us, till our ground, singeing his pate against the burning zone, make us her like a wart. Nay, from out mouth, I'll rant as well as thou. This is mere madness. Hear you, sir. What is the reason that you use me thus? I loved you. Ever? It is no matter. Let Hercules himself do what he may. The cat will mew, and dog will have his day. Pray thee, good Horatio, wait upon him. Dear Gertrude, set some watch over your son. This grave shall have a living monument. An hour of quiet shortly shall we see. Till then, in patience our proceedings be. Strengthen your patience in our last night's speech. Rosencrantz and Guildenstern go to it. They are not near my conscience. Their defeat does by their own insinuation grow. Peace. Who comes here? Your Lordship is right welcome back to Denmark. I humbly thank you, sir. Does know this water, Flora? No, my lord. My state is the more gracious what is of vice to know him. Sweet lord, if your friendship were at leisure, I should impart a thing to you from his majesty. I shall receive it, sir, with all diligence of spirit. Uh, your bonnet to his right use is uh, for the head. I thank your lordship, it is very hot. Uh, no, uh, believe me, it is very cold. The wind is uh, northerly. It is indifferent cold, my lord, indeed. If it, uh, methinks, is very sultry and hot for my complexion. Exceedingly, my lord. It is very sultry, as it were. I cannot tell how. But, my good lord, his majesty, that may signify to you that he hath laid a great wager on your head. Sir, here is the matter. Uh, I beseech you, remember. Nay, in good faith, for mine ease in good faith. Sir, here is newly come to court Laertes. Ah! What imports the nomination of this gentleman? Of oh, Laertes. Of him, sir. His purse is empty already. All his golden words are spent. You are not ignorant of what excellence Laertes is. Mm. I mean, sir, for his weapon. Oh, now what's his weapon? Rapier and dagger. Well, that's two of his weapons, but, uh, well... The king, sir, hath wagered with him six Barbary horses. Uh, against the which he impones, I take it. Six French rapiers and poniards with their assigns as girdles, hangers or so. Three of the carriages of faith are very dear to fancy, very responsive to the hilts, most delicate carriages and a very liberal conceit. Well, that's a French bet against the Danish, but uh, why is this imponed? 
as you call it. The king, sir, hath laid that in a dozen passes between yourself and him, he shall not exceed you three hits. He hath laid on twelve for nine. And it would come to immediate trial if your lordship would uh, vouchsafe the answer. Half I answer now. I mean, sir, the opposition of your person in trial. Sir, I will walk here in the hall. If it please his majesty, it uh, is the breathing time of day with me. Let the foils be brought, the gentleman willing, and the king hold his purpose. I shall win for him if I can. If not, I will gain nothing but my shame and the odd hits. Shall I re-deliver you in, sir? To this effect, sir, after what uh, flourish your nature will. I commend my duty to your lord. Your. Your. this wager, my lord. I do not think so. Since he went into France, I have been in continual practice. I shall win at the odds. Thou wouldst not think how ill all's here about my heart. It is no matter. Nay, my good lord. No, it is but foolery. If your mind dislike anything, obey. I will forestall their repair hither and say you are not fit. Not a whit. We defy augury. There's a special providence in the fall of a sparrow. If it be now, it is not to come. If it be not to come, it will be now. If it be not now, yet it will come. The readiness is all. Since no man has aught of what he leaves, what is to leave betimes? Let be. Sir, in this audience, let my disclaiming from a purposed evil free me so far in your most generous thoughts. But I have shot mine arrow o'er the house and hurt my brother. I am satisfied in nature, but in my terms of honor, I stand aloof and will no reconcilement till by some elder masters of known honor, I have a voice and precedent of peace to keep my name ungored. But till that time, I do accept your offered love, like love, and will not wrong it. I embrace it freely. Give us the foils. Come on. Come, one for me. I'll be your foil, Aetis. In my ignorance, your skill shall, like a star of the darkest night, shine fiery off indeed. You mock me, sir. No, by this hand. Give them the foils, young Osric. Cousin Hamlet, you know the wager. Very well, my lord. Your grace hath laid the odds of the weaker side. I do not fear it. I've seen you both. Since he is bettered, we have therefore on. This one is too heavy. Let me see another. This likes me well. These foils have all a length. Uh, I'm a good one. Stoops of wine upon this table. If Hamlet give the first or second hit, then all the battlements their ordnance fire. The king shall drink to Hamlet's bitter breath. And in this cup and union shall he throw richer than that which four successive kings in Denmark's crown have worn. Give me the cup. <laughs> and 
Let the kettle to the trumpet speak. The trumpet to the cannoneer without. The cannon to the heavens. The heavens to earth. Now the king drinks to Hamlet. Come, begin. And you, the judges, bear a wary eye. Come on, sir. Come on, my lord. One blow! Judgment. A hit. A very powerful hit. Well, again. Stay. Give me a drink. Hamlet, this pearl is thine. Here's to thy help. Give him the cup. Now, I'll play this bout first. Set it by a while. Come again. of breath. Here, Hamlet, take my napkin, rub thy brows. The queen carouses to thy fortune, Hamlet. Good, madam. Gertrude, do not drink. I will, my lord. I pray you pardon me. It is the poison cup. It is too late. Hamlet? I dare not drink yet, madam. By and by. Come, let me wipe thy face. My lord, I'll hit him now. I do not think it. Yet it's almost against my conscience. Come for the third, Laertes. You do but dally. I pray you, pass at your best violence. I'm afraid you make a wanton of me. Say it, sir. Come on. <laughs> I think neither way. Oh! on both sides. How is my lord? How is my lord? Oh, I is of my own spirit, Joshua. I've just been killed by my own treachery. Look to the queen there! It's wounds to see them bleed. Let the door 
be locked. Treachery! Seek it out! It is here, Hamlet. Hamlet, thou art slain. No bedsit in the world can do thee good. To thee there is not half an hour of life. The treacherous instrument is in thy hand, unbated and envenomed. The foul practice hath turned itself on me. No, oh, here I lie, never to rise again. My mother's poison. I can no more. The king, the king's to blame. And venom to thy work. Ah! 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 Defend me, friends, I am but her. Here, thou incestuous, murderous Damna Dane. Drink of this potion. Is thy union here? Ah. Follow my mother! Heaven, make thee free of it. I follow thee. I am dead. Or is you? Wretched queen. Adieu. You that look pale and tremble at this chance. Had I but time, as this fell sergeant death is strict in his arrest. Oh, I could tell you. But let it be. Horatio. I am dead, thou livest. Report me and my cause aright to the unsatisfied. Never believe it. I am more an antique Roman than a Dane. Here's yet some liquor left. Thou the man, give me the cup. Let go. By heaven, I'll have it. Oh, God. Horatio. What a wounded name. Things standing thus unknown shall live behind me. If ever thou didst hold me in thy heart, absent thee from felicity a while, and in this harsh world, Draw thy breath in pain to tell my story. What warlike noise is this? Young fought in brass with conquest come from Poland. Quite o'ercrows my spirit. 
I cannot live to hear the news from England. But I do prophesy the election lights on Fortin Brass. He has my dying voice. So tell him, with the occurrence more and less that have solicited the rest is silent. Now cracks a noble heart. Good night, sweet prince. And flights of angels sing thee to thy rest. Why does the drum come hither? Why is this sign? What is it you would see? If aught of woe or wonder, cease your search. This cry cries on havoc. O oh, proud death, what feast is toward in thy eternal cell that thou so many princes that are shot so bloodily has struck. Give order that these bodies, high on a stage, be placed to the view. And let me speak to the yet unknowing world how these things came about. So shall you hear of carnal, bloody, and unnatural acts accidental judgments, casual slaughters, of deaths put on by cunning and forced cause, and in this upshot, purposes mistook fallen on the inventor's heads. All this can I truly deliver. Let us haste to hear it and call the noblest to the audience. For me, with sorrow I embrace my fortune. I have some rights of memory in this kingdom which now to claim my vantage doth invite me. Of that shall I have also cause to speak. And from his mouth whose voice will pour no more. But let this same be presently performed, even while men's minds are wild, lest some mischance on plots and errors happen. But four captains bear Hamlet like a soldier to the stage, for he was likely, had he been put on, to have proved most royal. And for his passage, the soldiers' music and the rights of war speak loudly for him. Take up the bodies. Such a sight as this becomes a field. But here shows much amiss. Go. Bid the soldiers shoot.
Hello there, and welcome to this DVD from BBC Video, which you have either bought, borrowed or stolen. Although, if you stole this, then let's pause for a moment to think about what you've done. If you enjoy the kind of programme that you're about to experience once I eventually stop talking, we thought you might be interested to know that numerous other quality British programmes are available to you on the US cable network BBC America. Britain produces dramas like Puerto Rico produces short stops. When you take a class-ridden society with no ability to address its emotions and let it simmer for a thousand years, you frankly have the perfect recipe for drama. British comedies have struck a chord with American viewers for decades. At the very at the very least, you seem to find our accent absolutely hilarious. Ah, it makes me proud to be British. So why not tune in to BBC America and let us entertain you in the manner to which you are no longer accustomed. Not only is this an unmissable opportunity for you to hear words pronounced correctly, but you can also watch some of the finest programmes available. And all for the low, low price of absolutely no money whatsoever. Available in sparkling high definition. Thank you for your time. Enjoy your DVD.